Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, November 30th, 2023. Let's get into it. First thing that I found very interesting uh, was that the net outflow on treasuries is unbelievable right now. Uh, nobody's buying them. <laughs> Who wants to buy U.S. treasuries? I, I don't think China's going to be scooping them up no more. The world doesn't want to finance the United States uh, debt system anymore. So I think we're, we're heading for some hard times, and I've been talking about that in my videos for quite some time. The next thing was um, the Russians are pressing hard all along the, uh, the front lines, uh, especially around uh, Bakhmut. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I do think we're seeing the Ukrainian uh, battle lines crumbling at this point. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure a lot of more people are going to die, but uh, we'll get into some of the, the Russian hardware. Uh, we got three trillion dollars missing from the Pentagon budget and redacted came out today and said that the CIA was running a, a covert underground uh, operation with UFOs. <laughs> so I imagine that all these black operations is where that money's disappearing to. But unfortunately, our military is not looking too good at this point uh, as a result of all this money that's being funneled into all sorts of, well, let's just say nefarious activity. So uh, and we already got into the, uh, the Russians. Oh, yeah, this is a new one. They, they've got these new portable electronic warfare because I was an electronic warfare technician in the Air Force. Uh, back during the Iraq war and so this is of great interest to me and I've never seen these portable units before and so what it does is it kind of puts like a dome or a, uh, a, a force shield over top of the troops so that the uh, Ukrainians can't see with their drones uh, what's going on underneath this uh, this you know it's basically jamming you're jamming the uh, the drones uh, this is a new new thing in, in the war and I'm telling you this is why uh, we are way behind the Russians. We poked the bear, we poked the bear, we poked the bear, and now the bear is becoming more and more powerful. We're going to get even more onto that. So Andivka, I hope I pronounced that right, it's it's definitely fallen. They've already taken over the, uh, there's an industrial complex in the south, and, uh, and they're, they're coming in on the, on the sides. And I don't see, and then, by the way, that's where they were bombing the Donbass. Uh, the, the Ukrainians were able to kill 14,000 uh, Russian, well, Donbass uh, Russian-speaking people in the cities because that's where they were bombing them from. So this has been a big, big target of Russia uh, because they didn't want any more civilians to die with the uh, uh, Ukrainians using their artillery to hit the Donbass. So that those people in the Donbass should be safe here pretty soon. Good, good development. Iran is getting some Su-35 Russian fighters. Uh, and by the way, if you didn't know, Iran has an Air Force. I mean, you hear uh, these neocons like Lindsey Graham or Mittens Romney, you know. They're, they're yeah, we're going to go to war with Iran. We're going to go to war with Iran. Well, guess what? Iran's got a lot of hardware to fight back with. And they've got people up on the front lines with the Russians learning about all this electronic warfare. And, they, and, and Russia's also providing them with air defense capabilities. So you think that these F-35s are just going to fly right in there unmolested and, and be able to bomb like we used to in the past? I don't think so. I think we're going to have some planes shot down if they go in to try to bomb Iran. And then what's that going to do? Right, we'll see. So Iran, and, and by the way, Iran was the ones that, that helped the Russians with the drones. So don't tell me they're not technologically advanced on their military hardware. Uh, and, and, you know, now I think the Russians have surpassed Iran, but are, they're working together. So I am imagine that now Iran's probably getting drones from Russia. So, yeah, okay, you, you, you wanted to poke the bear. We, well, we, we definitely woke him up. And I, while, while we're talking about, well, let's, let's, watch, uh, let's watch Putin real quick. For our sovereignty, for justice. And it would not be an exaggeration to say that this is a national liberation struggle. We stand for the safety and the well-being of our people, for our right to be Russia, as a strong and independent power, as a civilizational state. It is our country, the Russian world, as it happened many times in history, that stood in the way of those who aspire to global dominance and to their exceptional nature. We're fighting not only for our own freedom, but for the freedom of the entire world. 
We believe that the dictate of one hegemonic power is becoming obsolete, and it is simply dangerous for everyone around it. The global majority already understands this, but it is our country that is now at the forefront of efforts to build a world order of better justice. Without a strong and sovereign Russia, there can be no stable world order. We know the threat we face. All right, so what Putin was saying there, and I hope you got it, was his, it was his speech to the Russians that the Russians, uh, they have a right to exist. And that the West, the United States, he didn't say United States, you saw the speech, but he's basically saying that the globalists, they don't want Russia to continue to exist anymore and that they are fighting not only for their freedom, but for the freedom of the world. Now imagine how a message like that goes around the world uh, when, when people are watching that speech everywhere. And they're looking at the United States and how uh, we're funding Israel to blow the hell out of Gaza and kill, what, I guess we're 15,000 dead women, children, and civilians, you know. Uh, I tell you, our, our global um, uh, outlook is not looking too good. So uh, let's just keep going. Yeah, North Korea. Well, if you haven't been following along, they put a satellite in orbit, uh, with, I'm sure with Russian help. And they also have an ICBM now. And by the way, they're sending back pictures of the capital, Washington, D.C., from their new satellite, saying, hey, you know, United States, we can hit you now with our nuclear weapons. And what wasn't happening under Trump. It was mainly the Democrats that brought this about. So whatever. You, you do what you want. So uh, I did want to talk about a couple of personal notes or some upcoming videos. I put solar panels on the roof. Now, I wasn't sure how that was going to go. These are 400-watt panels. Uh, I'm going to make a video about the whole project in the end and whether I think it's a good idea or a bad idea. I mean, in Florida, we have lots of sun. and uh, But I was worried about, you know, if a hurricane comes along, would it blow the panels off? You know, I've heard people talk about that. I got to see what the bills are going to be because I wonder if my bill is going to be less or more. It's supposed to be. The reason I did this was... Because I thought with inflation and with, you know, all the prices going up on everything, I wanted supposedly my, it's going to be a fixed bill from this point. It's a lease for 25 years. And the electricity my house produces gets sold back to Duke Energy. So my electric bill is supposed to stay the same no matter what happens with hyperinflation or the dollar. We'll see how it works out. I'll let you know in a future video. Uh, the other thing was... Uh, I think I talked about this last video was I picked up the Samsung Galaxy S23 uh, at Google Fi. You know, I, I, I know I'm working with the enemy. Maybe Patriot Mobile will be a better uh, service for you. But they had it for that. The reason why I stick with them is they got six, it's $600 off. And with my trade in of $250, which I could get more for the S22 on uh, eBay, of course. But, you know, it's a no hassle way of getting into a new phone for basically 300 bucks now is the capabilities of the s23 that much better than the s22 i don't think so uh on a, another personal note maybe you guys can leave a comment below I'm, i've been cleaning up my youtube channel and one of the things that i do is i go out and i search for that cybersecurity guy just to see what comes up and it keeps bringing up an old zombie channel so i log into my gmail account online and it you know you go into a video studio and it says manage your channels well this the zombie channel doesn't even show up. I can't delete it. So if you got any ideas on how to delete a zombie channel, that's what I call it, the, the zombie channel. And I actually sent a tweet. I mean, there's no way to get in touch with, with uh, YouTube unless you're, you know, you're paying the money, and I'm not. Uh, let's see. Uh, by the way, there are lots of HIMAR strikes on the uh, Russian positions. I'm really shocked at how many HIMARS that the United States has given to Ukraine. I mean, what... What do we have left in our inventory? I mean, my God, I just, you don't make these like candy, you know? It's not like you got an assembly line and the HIMAR flows off every two seconds, you know, like we did during World War II with a lot of the hardware with the huge uh, warehouses and production. So I'm wondering, you know, the Democrats have defanged the United States. I wonder how many HIMARS we have left to protect us here in the United You don't think that the war is not going to come here. You've got open borders. The Democrats want open borders. They're changing the entire electorate of the United States because they realize that, well, the, the, the black vote is up in arms uh, in Chicago right now because they're getting all the money's going to the illegal immigrants. And so they're getting to live in hotels and they're getting uh, food and housing and, and the blacks are on the streets going, well, what about us? 
we're not getting anything. I, you know, so are they going to vote Democrat? Yeah, they probably will. <laughs> but, but still, I mean, you know, at least they're they're pissed off about it. So that's uh, that's a good thing, because uh, you know, I think that they're realizing that because Chicago has been Democrat for God knows I, I I don't even think it's ever been Republican uh, the city of Chicago. So uh, let's uh, get to Viktor Orban. Uh, this is his comments on the Ukraine war. Let's watch that video. With Ukraine, that's the next one. No question, aggression is aggression. To transgress the international law is a, is a transgression of international law. We can't accept it. Uh, so I would not like to, to speak too much about that because it's obvious. But the question was how we Europeans will react on that. And we, we did not in a proper way. I do remember when the similar crisis happened with Crimea. I was there at the negotiation table at that time also in the European Council and our leaders, we together, responded to the Crimean crisis to say that we have to localize the conflict, localize and isolate the conflict. And we sent the German and the French leaders uh, to negotiate and we reached the Minsk Treaty, which managed somehow, not so, but managed the situation. Nowadays, when this Donetsk uh, conflict erupted, our response was just the opposite. Globalizing the conflict. Not localize, but internationalize and globalize the conflict. And now this issue is a global issue. I think it's bad. It's bad for everybody. It's bad for Europe, it's bad for the Ukrainians, bad for the Russians, it's bad for everybody. Okay. Uh, when we are speaking on that war, we have to understand where we are. Uh, what was the strategy of the West in that war? I simplify a little bit, but, but this is the fact. Our strategy was that the Ukrainians will, that the Ukrainians will fight uh, and will win on the front line. The Russians will lose on the front line. And that lose will create a change in Moscow, there will be a new leadership and we can negotiate. Putin is a world climber you know, crime maker, whatever, uh, and the new leadership will be acceptable as partner for negotiation to European Union. That was the strategy. We finance the Ukrainians uh, fight and die. Where we are now, it's obvious that the Ukrainians will not win on the front line. There is no solution on the battleground. Russians will not lose. There will be no political change in Moscow. This is the reality. All right, so that was that was Viktor Orban, and I wanted you to see that because we're just kind of talking about Ukraine, and we've gotten into Putin's speech. Uh, let's talk about future videos here real quick. I got two videos of the new Iranian Dilemon Destroyer, uh, but they put it to music, and every time I play a video with any sort of music, it gets uh, copyright. So I'll put that up in a separate video, and uh, if it gets copyright, because most of the time on YouTube, what people don't understand a copyright violation just means you can't monetize the video and that the person that claims copyright is going to make any money. I don't make any money, you know, so it's perfectly OK. You, you don't want to be doing it on a regular basis because YouTube's going to ban you, you know. So uh, I, I, I don't know what music is, is good or bad. You know, you can go. There's free music channels that you can go to. And, and but but I find these videos and I find them very interesting. And the other one is the world's toughest squirrel. And they put that to music, too. Maybe I could find some free music and put it to my own music. And, of course, then we got a video of migrants uh, by the thousands coming up on trains as the Democrats fund the uh, migrant crisis. You know, somebody explain to me, why do Democrats, why are they for child trafficking? Why are they for the sex trade? Why are they for open borders? Why are they for hundreds of thousands of Americans getting killed by uh, fentanyl? I, I, these things just blow my mind, and I don't know why Democrats are for these, other than they just want the total demolition of the United States in the previous video. I talked about that. So let's finish off with some Russian hardware. This is a MI-28N Hilo.
And then, of course, always we got to finish off with the gods of war. This is the uh, the uh, giant G I A T S I N T dash B one fifty two millimeter gun. Gato! And of course, I always forget to talk about what I've got here. This is a new book that I bought. By the way, very expensive for, and it's nice big print. <laughs> I need to start publishing again because if you can get twenty-four dollars for a little book like this, when with when mine was a thousand pages, uh, you know, I, I, I. By the way, I'm going to bust that book up and, and do what this guy did and just put out little books. But this is called Crime Incorporated. It's by uh, Vince Everett. Ellison, and I'll be doing a review on that. It says, how Democrats employ mafia and gangster tactics to gain and hold power. So I think this should be a very interesting read. I haven't gotten to that. The other thing is I won't include it in this video, but, you know, and sometimes I'm pretty stupid, but I figured out with, with X, now you can bookmark uh, tweets that you find interesting. And, and you know, I, sometimes I try to make videos from the tweets. So what I'm kind of doing now is when I when I read a tweet that I want to talk about in the video, I bookmark it. I just figured out how to do that. I well, I've seen you know other YouTube channels that they bookmark them. I just wish I could, you know, throw it up onto the screen, which I'm kind of learning. You know, I'm looking into it. All right, peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.